Chief, two shots, one in the neck, one in the chest, DOA. No witnesses, neighbor here across the street heard the crash, called it in. Hey, Chief. <clears throat> Kevin? Located one of the slugs here. Trajectory high to low, huh? Shooter's car was higher? Yeah, probably a truck or an SUV. Probably about a million of those in the city. One minute you're driving to work, next minute you're dead. There's no way to start a day. Victor's name was Daniel Laird. He lived in Columbia Heights. He worked with something called the Elkwood Group. He's a tech guy downtown. He's heading east on the home. That's the opposite direction of his commute. Where was he going? We'll find out. Anything else? Yeah, gun was a 357 automatic. No shell casings. We sent the slugs to ballistics. Oh, and the boy in the picture is his son, Peyton. We sent a car to pick him up at school. What about the wife? Passed away two years ago. Leukemia. All right, keep me posted. Yes, sir. Chief? Yep. Uh, I need an extra hour at lunch for a parent-teacher conference. Yeah, sure. You need a ride? No. No, I'll take the bus. It'll give me a chance to collect my thoughts. I don't know why they schedule these things during the day. I heard about it on the news this morning. It's a shame. I really like Mr. Laird. You know him well? Actually, not at all. He kept to himself. That's what made him one of my favorites. Some of the others around here. You wouldn't believe the way they go on and on, giving you every detail of their lives like you've got nothing but time. You know what I'm saying? Wait here. Let anybody else in here? No. But he had a visitor late last night. Some chick. I have her license number. Here, this is her. Virginia Plates. Yeah, you okay waiting here for the crime scene guys to show up? Well, sure. Give me a chance to hang out with my buddy Mitch here. Thank you. So, you got a girlfriend, Mitch? Yeah, I, I did. I used to. I used yeah. to have a girlfriend, yeah. Ms. Moritz, we're gonna need a statement. Ask you some questions about your brother. I don't know who killed him. I don't know anything. Well, you might remember something. I'm gonna have to make arrangements for him. Chief, they're bringing Peyton Laird in. I'd like to tell him myself. Joe. Miss Laird. That's it. It's any easier. Lisa Fabrizzi. Hi, I'm Detective Temple Page, MPD. What can I do for you? Your name is Fabrizzi, right? Yeah. 
What's wrong? Uh, nothing. I'm sorry. I just feel like I've met you somewhere before. You, you grew up in D.C.? No, I'm from Atlanta. I went to Howard, though. Maybe that's it? No, no. Well, care to tell me why you're here? Oh, my God. Who killed him? We were hoping you could help us with that, Miss Fabrizi. Do you know where Laird was going this morning? To work? I don't know. Any idea who might have ransacked his apartment? No. Do you mind telling us what you were doing there last night? Daniel and I were old friends. Do I need a lawyer? Something? It's starting to sound like I need a lawyer. Why would you need a lawyer to help us solve the murder of a friend of yours? Am I under arrest? If I'm not under arrest, I'd like to go. What's up, Temple? I don't know, Chief. I, I know I've met her before somewhere. I know it. All right. Check her out. Get over to Laird's office and find out about this, um, Elkwood group. Find out what they do. Sure. It's horrible. He's a young son, Peyton, I think his name is. You hear about this sort of thing happening, but you never think it'll happen to somebody you know. Mr. Abbott, how well did you know Mr. Laird? Please, gentlemen, have a seat. Uh, he just came to us recently, but I was quite fond of him. That's the sort of guy he was. What was his position here? He was in the uh, Foreign Accounts Division. They cover the installation of all our interbanking connectivity. And in English, that would be? The Elkwood Group is a computer banking interface company. We design and manufacture interfacing software as well as installing ATMs throughout the world. Did Mr. Laird mention anything to you? Any problems, disagreements, threats? No, I mean, he wasn't here long enough for any of us to know. What about the other employees? Any of them ever had their lives threatened? No. <laughs> Not that I know of. I mean, come on, this is a software company. You were in the Gulf? Yes. 83rd Mechanized Recon outside of Riyadh. Marines, the 1st Battalion. We led the charge in the south. Mr. Abbott, you wanted to see me? Yes, gentlemen, this is Mr. Braxton, head of our corporate security. He'll give you a hand with whatever you need. I have a meeting. Please call if there's anything you want. Thank you. We'll do that. I'm Detective Page. It's Detective Debrino. Welcome. Uh, we need to know everything that Mr. Lair was working on up until this morning. I'll do what I can. Okay, that'll include travel itinerary, mail, email, everything. Sure. Just as soon as I see a warrant. Well, your boss just said that you'd help us out. My boss called me in to handle it. This is how I handle it. We'll be in touch, gentlemen. Yeah, I'd say that went well. What do you think? The chief's gonna be very happy with that. That's who I remember her from. Who? The woman, Lisa Fabrizi. From the Gulf. She was a soldier? No. CIA. CIA, you sure? Yes, sir. When I was in the Gulf, I escorted a lieutenant colonel to a special briefing on chemical weapons. It was given by the CIA. She conducted it. Hmm. So how's that title there? We're not sure yet, sir. We're just about to get to the juicy stuff. But then the uh, cooperation's right they up. They went good cop, bad cop on us. Head of security got involved. If we want to find anything, we're going to need a warrant. What is that? My, uh, my cappuccino machine exploded. Ooh. Hey. Well, that's not supposed to be there. Somebody's bugging us. <clears throat> not anymore. OK. Laird is driving down Almont when he was shot, headed for the Key Bridge, right? Yes, sir. Cross the Key, down the parkway. Next stop, Langley. Home of the CIA. Question is, why was he headed to the CIA? And why did somebody not want him to get there?
It's kismet. I don't know what else to call it. I don't know what made me look up, but I did, and there it was. A house with a for sale sign? That's kismet? No, <laughs> not a house. My dream house. One I've wanted since I was a little girl. Here, look. Virtual tour, you gotta love that. <laughs> oh, Ella, it's adorable. I'm gonna make an offer. There's no rush. Take some time. Talk about it with Clive. No, this, this is my dream. And Clive is in Chicago until next Tuesday. The house might be gone by then. And no, if I'm going to do it, I got to do it now. <laughs> we may want to take a better look at our security around here, Chief. Another one. That makes three. Hmm. Saying good. What's happening? Bug infestation. Pardon? Well, someone's taking a rather keen interest in what we're doing around here, Al. Now, what would you do if you found something that didn't belong to you and had no business being here? Return it. John. Jack, what brings you to Langley? You don't know. No. Well, aren't these your brand? Not my thing, Jack. I was just on my way to see somebody whose thing it is. OK. Brought my little spy kit. You don't think it'll offend anybody, do you? Probably. You know me better than this. No. I knew you when you were a senator, Tom. I don't know what the hell you are now. Jack, the CIA is not in the business of bugging our own citizens, especially not a chief of police. Yeah. Yeah, they wouldn't do anything illegal, would they? Yeah, I can understand your skepticism, but don't take it out of Mr. Reynolds. We're all trying to help here. The CIA is not involved in that. Lisa Fabrizi is. She works for you, doesn't she? Not directly. She's involved with the Office of Homeland Security. Oh, that's convenient. It's the truth. Now, if I can be of any other help to you, just let me know. Had your chance, Tom. What? See you around, John. Jack. Chief Mannion. Robert Quinn, liaison to Homeland Security. Yes, I know. I suspect we have some things to discuss. Well, if we do, we got a problem. Nothing we can't handle. You folks are so accommodating. Saudi Arabia. Sorry, never been. I hear it's nice, though, if you don't mind the heat, if you're not a woman. You were part of the CIA's anti-terrorism team. You were there. Oh, that was 12 years ago, detective. I'm flattered that you remember me. <laughs> but we need you to come downtown again. Now? Yeah. What if I say no? Why would you do that? Because I have a life, and you could have called. That's true. But we need you now. And I was always taught that if you have something to say to someone, you should do it in person. I'll get my jacket. The former director of the CIA, a guy named Robert Quinn, on the board of directors at the Eltwood Group two years ago. And three prominent employees are ex-CIA guys. Victor Abbott, the CEO, one of the ex-agents, had a dozen confirmed kills in Desert Storm. Now, he's a member of the Chesapeake Bay Shooting Club, 
own several guns, one of which is a 357 automatic. You drive an SUV? You guessed it. Where does he live? Maryland. Maryland. Well, they require that a weapon be test-fired before they issue a permit, so check out the gun registration forms. We might get lucky. Now you got it. Lisa. What? Well, you forgot to tell me something the last time we talked. Now, you forgot to tell me you're with the CIA. I didn't forget. There are security protocols which I'm required to follow. Ah, yeah. Yeah, I've been uh, reading your uh, CIA handbook thingy here. But uh, I haven't been able to find the part that protects you from criminal prosecution in a murder investigation. So now you're accusing me of Daniel Laird's murder? No, I'm accusing you of hindering our investigation, though. Well, that's ridiculous. Not to his son. It isn't. Daniel asked me to come over to his apartment last night because he wanted to use me as a sounding board. He didn't know who he could trust. Lair was CIA? Yes. He was placed inside Elkwood a few months ago. The agency was looking for some missing money siphoned off of funds earmarked for covert operations. We had suspected the CEO, Victor Abbott. One of your own? Formerly one of our own. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, I keep forgetting how you guys work. Get her home, have her watch. Well, I'll be watching, I'll be protecting her. Both. Somebody needs to shut him up. We got kids and families here. We'll take care of it, ma'am. I, I should really go in here with you. He doesn't react well to strangers. Ma'am, we'll take care of it. Mr. Atya, we're getting complaints about the noise. Thanks God you're here. The noise is terrible. Come in. Now look what you've done. Not only are you driving me crazy, but you got the neighbors pissed off too. My wife. She never lets up. Night and day she's carrying on. Maybe we should talk to her. Not likely. She's been dead seven years. You hear? Now you hear. All right, I'll, yeah. che I'll check it out. You? I'll stay with him. Mr. Atkin? But uh... Why don't you take a seat right here? Ma'am? MPD? Uh, where are you, ma'am? You all right? Ma'am? Brander, what's your 20? Oh, I'm in the basement. Hang on. Ma'am? You need help? No, I am I'm fine. Will you just stay off the radio? Brander? Brander, answer me. What happened? Did you ever see the movie Alien? Yeah, the claws were sharper and longer. Yeah. Yeah. And the eyes, and the eyes, the eyes were more like. Did you see the movie Cujo? When they, were, they went down, like that. You're putting mm -hmm. an APB out on a rabid squirrel. Oh, trust me, it is not a squirrel. Okay. And how do you explain that sound? Brander, that's a comic book character. It looks like Swamp Thing with fur. I, what, what do you think DC was before it became the nation's capital? A swamp. Thank you. Chief. Yeah. Okay. Um. What do you know about escrow? Escrow? Yeah. Now, let's see. 30 days is short, 60 days is long, and 45 is somewhere in between. Seriously. Well, you're asking the wrong person. Now, I'm never in one place long enough to make that kind of commitment. You serious about the house, huh? 
You know about the house? Well, I know everything that goes on around this place, Ella. It's a curse sometimes, really. Well, I made an offer. Bet you didn't know that. You must really like it. Yeah. You know, every Sunday when I was young, my parents and I would ride the bus to church, and we would pass this place. And there was a little girl. She was almost always out front, playing on a tire swing, and I wanted so badly to live in that house. And my mother told me that if I worked very hard, one day I could. And you did. And you deserve it. Yes, I do. <laughs> you know, my grandfather and my father, they helped build this city. And they owned the pride of knowing they had done that, but neither of them ever had a piece of it to call their own. Got a bodyguard now, huh? Actually, there's three. Don't forget the two cops outside. Until we figure out what's going on, we're gonna be here. You have a drink on the job? No. Then you're gonna have to watch me because I need a glass of wine. in your head and get up. All right, all right, I'm getting up. Braxton. You know him? We used to work together. I didn't like him then, either. You got me on breaking and entering. That's it. So if you're done, I'd like to go post bail. <laughs> bugs we found in the chief's office, along with the bugs you were planting in the Fabrizi apartment, have consecutive serial numbers. We connect you with a criminal conspiracy that leads to Daniel Laird's death. That means murder charges. It means nothing. Come on, that's my personal property. Is that your phone? Yeah, what's left of it. Well, it's interesting, because the last six numbers you called were to the same area code and number. Joe, what is the area code for Langley, Virginia, please? 703. 703. Well, let's just see what this gets us. My guess is the CIA. But... Mr. Quinn's office. Jack Manning, Chief of Police, Washington, D.C. I'd like to make an appointment to see Mr. Quinn. One moment, I would have been happy to meet you at your office, Chief. You bugged my office. Why'd you do that? I didn't. Your man Braxton did. He's no longer my man. Elkwood Group, as I'm sure you know, is in the vanguard of a very nasty war. A nasty, I don't mind. War I can live with, but abuse of power? I have an obligation to protect this country, regardless of whether or not feelings get hurt. Tell me you didn't kill one of your own. OK. I didn't. If I find out you're lying, you're going to need a bigger shield than the CIA to hide behind. All I need is a couple more pieces, just a couple. Having the right pieces may not be enough. It's knowing where they fit. I'm good at that. Good day, Queen. Hey, Tom. Jack. Good to see you. Come on in. Thanks. Hey, fellas. Chief. Well, did you read the sports page this morning? Hmm? Did you see what my Wildcats did to you guys? Oh, we trounced We, we had you. three guys out with injuries. Come on. Uh-huh. No, no, no. See, it's in the coaching, Tom. Huh. It's always in the coach. It's not the team, not the organization. It's the coaching. See, I have never seen a winning team with two coaches. Am I right? Jack, I'm not the enemy. I want to help you. Boy, now, am I getting close to something here? We gonna expose something because you're starting to circle the wagons here the cia is involved but not in the way you think we sent daniel laird into the elkwood group god tom you want me to tell that to a son or would you like to do that i'm sorry this is a problem for you i was screwed by the cia in vietnam and they screwed me in dc what happened before me i can't control 
And I can't promise there aren't forces within my organization that might not want to see this case solved. But rest assured, I do. You may not like what we find, Tom. I don't think I can protect you. Whatever comes down, comes down. I'll deal with it. I just want Daniel Laird's killer brought to justice. Yes, sir. Maryland sent over the test round from Victor Abbott's registration. Unfortunately, it doesn't match the bullets we pulled from Laird's car. Doesn't let Abbott off the hook. He could have another 357. Hey, Kevy Kev, your buddy's in the house. Stay on Abbott. Let me know. Sure. What's up, Mitch? She didn't have a briefcase. So? Well, it didn't hit me until I saw Mrs. Kellerman leave her briefcase by the mailboxes. I'm all, Mrs. K, Mrs. K, your briefcase. And then it hit me. What hit you? Laird's lady friend went up that night with a purse, but she came down with a purse and a briefcase. Tag-teaming me now? Why don't you tell us about the briefcase? What briefcase? The one Laird gave you last time you saw him? Call you back. I'm forbidden from disclosing anything unless asked directly. That's policy. Well, now we're asking you directly, where is the briefcase? In a locker at Union Station. Good. Let's go. Let's go. All right, that's your <laughs> cellar drawer, folks. We don't know what it is, so avoid contact with it. Brander. The basement. I saw it. I saw it. Okay, all right. All right. I, I saw it in the basement. I'll start on this end. You start on that end, and we'll flush him out. All right. Oh! Ah! What happened? I slipped. The creature get you? No. Ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. I got evidence. Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. Jack, I'm not going to touch that. Whatever Laird was working on was CIA business. John, here's your mission, should you choose to accept it, and you will. You were going to take the discs to Langley. Copies, not the originals. And when you get there, you're going to decipher them, not edit them. You're going to hurry back here very quickly. Please tell me you're going to self-destruct and You won't do this, John. Or otherwise, I'll subpoena you for concealing the murder. And I will go through your life with a comb so fine, you're not going to feel the teeth until they tear you apart. Jack, we're friends. We are? Okay, then hurry up. <sighs> hey, Brander. The zoo guy made a positive ID on the evidence you stepped in. It's Capuchin Monkey. Monkey? No way. No, the creature I Would saw was... Would you stop calling it the creature? It is a monkey. It was probably somebody's illegal pet. It escaped. They couldn't report it. All animal control. Oh, no chance. No, he started it. I'm going to finish it. Who are you? Coming through, MPD. Yeah, you. Tangela's mangoes? Even I don't eat this well. Exotic fruit for an exotic animal. Hey, come on. Not for you. Two, oh, wonderful one, witnesses. Sightings of the mysterious creature continue to grow as the rest of Excuse me. Could you take this outside, please? OK. Thanks. We have to go make fools of ourselves now. Sightings of the creature continue to grow as the residents of this apartment building grow more concerned. We do a lot of inspection on these older houses. This isn't anywhere near the worst of them. Really? So the plumbing's OK. A mm -hmm. couple small issues. You've got some loose fittings under the house, a little bit of corrosion. Uh... Oh, what about the wiring? I have a child. It has to be safe. A lot of the electrical's already been redone. Probably a good idea, though, to finish the job, replace what's left of the original. Sounds expensive. I don't know. Plumbing, wiring, structural, I'd say you're looking at maybe three, 4,000 worth of work. It's funny, is it? It's deceptive from the front, you know? How so? I, I don't know, it just seemed a lot bigger from outside. And... And the ceilings are much lower than I expected. It's a good deal. There you go. 
Congratulations. Trap said, can't we just leave? I'm gonna wait a little longer. I wanna go. Come on, monkey. Come on, monkey, monkey. Delicious fruit. Nancy, Nancy! I need to know what it says, John. And these are just symbols. It's the best I can do, Jack, unless you've got Laird's encryption key. Well, don't they teach code breaking in spy school anymore? Do you know what a 128-bit encryption key is? What? Doesn't even matter what it is, Jack. The point is, it could take a Cray computer a thousand years to crack it. You need Laird's code. Laird is dead. Then you have a problem, my friend. We all have a problem. Abbott knows what this is. He knew Laird had it. He killed him to get it. Now we got it, so we use it to get to him. Mr. Abbott's office. Mr. Abbott, please. Mr. Abbott and Ms. Fabrizi on line two. Take a message. Sir, she said it was urgent. Put her through. Yes. I'm a friend of Daniel Laird's. Yes. He told me all about you, Mr. Abbott, and about your indiscretions. He gave me some things. Memos, wire transfer records, stuff you don't want the police getting a hold of. What do you want? Half of everything you've stolen. Meet me at the Lincoln Memorial in an hour, and we'll discuss our future. What information? The information you were talking to Mr. Abbott about? I need that now. You stole the money. You killed Laird. Look, I'm gonna count to two. One. You hear it, Temple. 357. Could be the murder one. You said we got some explaining to do, huh? You can bet we'll be in touch. <laughs> you know what feels good, Mr. Quinn? You find that one piece of the jigsaw puzzle connects everything together? I love that. Victor Abbott brought in a highly trained ex-agent to head security for his company. What the man did on his own had nothing to do with me or the agency. Yeah, can I have your word on that? I've given my life to protecting this country, Chief. I have too. I prefer to do it in the light of day. Watch your step, Mr. Quinn. Always. You know what I do when my tie gets uncomfortable? I take it off. I saw you at the funeral. Your dad would have been very proud of you, you know that? So you have to take care of your aunt now, huh?
What's that? Well, it's called the Purple Heart. And they give it to men who have been wounded in battle. And my dad was in World War II. He gave it to you? Yeah, he gave it to me after my mom died. And he said that wearing it close to my heart would make me feel a lot better. I don't feel better. Oh, yeah, you got to give it time to work. You like boats? Yeah? I live on a tugboat. Would you come visit me sometime? OK. I have a dog. What's his name? No, oh, you got to come visit. All right. I'll visit. Now, look. Here's my card. You call me, day or night, if you ever need anything, right? All right. All right. How'd it go with the house? I withdrew my offer. Really? Mm. Why? The inspection uh, no good? What? Mm, it's better than most, according to the inspector. No, Chief. I walked to that house today, and it hit me. I looked at it from a real point of view, you know? Not that of a young girl riding by on a bus. It's not my dream house. It's a symbol of another time. Not me. I'm, I'm living my dream. The fact that I could buy that house makes me so proud. But it's not the right house for me and Ricky. Not now. Yeah. Okay. Well, I gotta tell you, you know, if you weren't spoken for, I'd ask you to marry me. You know, bump off Clyde. <laughs> <laughs> is it a monkey? Or is it a... Ah, it's hysterical. Very funny. Yeah. You're a bunch of comedians, aren't you? Hey, yeah. Hey, Brenda. <laughs> is there a problem? No, sir. Carry on. We're all going to sleep well knowing you're out there tonight. Yeah. Okay. It was a monkey, right? <laughs> Thank you, sir. You know you're not doing yourself any good here, Braxton. You got one of those cyanide capsules under your tongue. Now might be a good time to bite down. <laughs> My client obviously has nothing to say. Everybody decent? OK, I'll do the talking. We know you killed Danny Laird. We found the murder weapon. Gun was in your hand. We plea man, too. He's out in six. What? For murder? No, 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 no. Not a chance. What if I roll over on my superiors? The chief has an employee for the Central Intelligence Agency. My client is a small fish in a very large and murky pond. Now, you want some clarity? He's willing to give it to you for a price. Well, what I'd like to know is who within the CIA ordered the killing of Daniel Laird. I can definitely help you with that. But not without a deal. Until you offer some guarantees, we've got nothing else to say. Now, if you'll excuse us. My client has a scheduled bail hearing. Bill, you want to sign right here? desperate attempt of a guilty man to make a deal? If there's anything I should know about this situation, anything at all, this would be a good time to tell me. Braxton stole for himself. He killed for himself. 
Just a bad apple. What's up? You have any ideas on how that might be prevented? Yes, I do. Gage. Mannion on two, sir. Put him through. Chief Mannion? Braxton was just killed on his way to court. Nice work, Tom.